My name is Charity. Uh, I've done a little bit of everything, but I like operations better than anything else because I feel like it, that's where computer science meets reality. And I have a bias towards reality. <laughs> um, this is how I feel about software. Um, and uh, like Matt mentioned, I do have a book, um, O'Reilly book, called D Database Reliability Engineering that came out. Now, I don't know if you're aware of this, but you're not allowed to have a quote-unquote mythical creature on the cover of your O'Reilly book. <laughs> so we picked a horse. Um, but I can fix it. I can fix it. This is a unicorn. You can't see it. So if you have, if you have, if you have the book, you need your cover fixed. Um, anyway, um, I like operations. I've been on call since I was 17, um, but I've never really liked monitoring. I don't know. I've always gravitated towards the databases uh, side of the systems, um, which is why this talk of Greg's I really loved. <laughs> He's like, monitoring is dead. I'm like, yes. Um, Monitoring systems have not changed significantly in 20 years. It's actually true. Like, they've matured, they've gotten better, they've improved. These are all great things. But like, we've been through how many architectural revolutions <laughs> since then? And we're still like, and we're still, you know, our dashboards and our whatever. I mean, these are great things. Um, but there is increasing need for other tools in our toolbox. Um, now, it's important to note that I, in a vendor in a shill, um, uh, as Mark Callahan would say, uh, bench marketing. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, so take everything I say with a grain of salt. I tend to make very big statements that I don't even 100% believe, but it's more entertaining that way. Um, I'm not trying to sell you anything except um, on a way of thinking about the world that I think might save your ass the way it saved mine. Um, this talk is kind of about what is observability versus monitoring, which you guys are all going to know, um, but might still be interesting. Um, complexity is exploding, right? And fundamentally, this is about Moore's Law, right? Uh, the reason that we aren't real engineers <laughs> is because our fucking engineering discipline won't slow down long enough for us to get standards. Um, it's the same thing as driving um, you know, all the features and um, our shiny iPhones and Customers demanding bigger and better features and more complicated things. Like our complexity is, is like kind of insane and fun. <laughs> um, but our tools uh, that we've had for the past 20 years are fundamentally very much about answering known unknowns. And um, those are not the problems that I am increasingly facing. Uh, Greg defined monitoring as the action of observing and checking the behavior and outputs of the system and its components over time. Cool. Um, doesn't work. Um, how many of you are on call? In some on call rotation. Excellent, excellent. I can't. I, I. I feel like I ask that just out of habit, and I always expect every hand to go up. In the last couple of times I've given this talk, there have been like one out of ten. I'm just like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Why are you even here? Like, um, but it's no longer. Those of us who've been on call um, know that it's no longer actually possible to curate and tend to the paging alerts and, and flappy alarms and false alarms and shit without it being like a full-time job. Um, even for just moderately complex systems, if you care about quality. And this burns out your humans, and it doesn't actually make your systems better, but like we're all distributed systems engineers now, right? First of all, that means you should ask for another $20,000. <laughs> Second of all, this is like the fundamental lesson of distributed systems. It's never actually working. <laughs> Uh, um, so many catastrophic things exist right now. If you sleep well at night, you probably shouldn't. Um, you know when you put someone on call for the first time and they're like watching and they're like, oh, there's an error. And you're just like, oh, grasshopper. <laughs> <laughs> but like if you have a, a wall full of green dashboards, um, you shouldn't actually feel any better about yourself because they're lying to you. So this brings us to observability. Um, what is it? Well, observability is a term taken from control theory. Um, and according to half of Twitter, it's uh, just me making up something for marketing purposes, which, <laughs> fine. 
It is kind of something I'm using for marketing purposes, but there's a reason. It's not just about having a shiny new term. It's about the fact that, like, for 20 years, we've been developing these best practices and, and these ways of, of monitoring systems that are really robust and they're real, well understood and well known. And I don't want to fuck with them. <laughs> and the best practices for observability are often diametrically opposed. Um, like, for example, um, monitoring best practices. Uh, you should not have to watch graphs all day. The system should inform you when something is broken, right? That's a great practice. Observability is not um, just about errors and it's not like if you try and, and, and page yourself for every like the combinatorial explosion of all of the thresholds you could possibly exceed or, or go under everybody's gonna quit and should quit um, they're different they're different practices they're different ways of interacting with with systems and they can coexist right they can coexist um, the same team can can apply both in different contexts that's fine um, also, it's about more whiskey. It's about drinking more, probably. Um, that's my alter ego. Um, moder monitoring is observability actually turns out to be a superset. You know, monitoring is heavily biased towards alerts and problems and actionable things. That's another best practice. Um, every alert should be actionable. That is terrific. <laughs> For what it is. Um, I think of monitoring as being like um, uh, integrations tests. Once you're aware of a way that a system can fail, you add a test for it. Once you're aware of a way that your system can fail, you monitor for it. That's just like skimming the top off of all the problems that you have and will have in the future and will continue. It's, it's a very small fraction. Um, how many of you here uh, are computer scientists? <laughs> Good for you. I am a music major dropout. <laughs> so I started reading, I'm like, complexity, it really bugs me when people throw this word around. It sounds to me like they're trying to, to avoid having to think clearly about something. Um, so I start researching and I like finding all these things like psychomatic complexity. They teach you this in computer science school. All said volumes. <laughs> yeah, I figured. <laughs> I was I was not there. Um, it's very interesting stuff. However, this, this is how I'm going to think about it. It's going up. Um, by my calculations, it's going to be impossible for anyone to understand anything by sometime next year. That's fine. It's cool. You know it's true. Because I have a graph. But here's something more practical for us to look at. Um, are you guys familiar with Parse, the mobile backend as a service? Um, so I worked at Parse a long ass time. I was their first in for hire. Built the systems, built the team um, through the Facebook acquisition. Hi, Scott. <laughs> um, so this is a diagram of our infrastructure um, you know, a couple years ago. And that, that cloud in the middle there is about 200 MongoDB replica sets where we ran random ass queries that developers from all over the world would upload their queries and we would run them. Uh, one of those Blue clouds is a, a couple thousand um, hosts running a bunch of uh, JavaScript containers for random ass developers all over the world to upload their JavaScript, and we would run, never do this. <laughs> <laughs> you could call back into parse from your JavaScript, you know, so it could come back in as many times. Um, any, any individual node in that mess could make the entire system appear to slow down. Super cool. Anyway. And here's the national power grid for my country. So we all ran these, right? We're all familiar with them. They were great. You could hold them in your head. You could reason about them. You could pretty much just like, you could see the first three characters of the page in the middle of the night and go, I know what that is. <laughs> um, but the systems that we're building aren't breaking in those ways anymore, right? They're breaking in ways that look a lot more like the national power grid where some problems are only visible if you're like hyper-local, if you're looking at you know, a block, a city block. Some of them are only visible if you're zooming way out. Um, all, all of them are completely unpredictable. You don't know what, what, where the next hurricane is going to come. Uh, you can intuit some places are more likely than others, but it's, it's not a thing. And that's why scientists rely on their tools to tell them what's happening. Um, 
a tiny detour. I'll tell you. So the reason that I started this company um, it goes back to the Facebook acquisition of Parse. Um, and around the time we got acquired, let's see, um, when I left, we had over a million apps. Um, when we got acquired, we had about 60,000 mobile apps uh, running on our platform. And this is about the point in time when I became aware that we had built a system with some of the best engineers in the world that was effectively undebuggable. We were doing everything right, you know? Um, but like, I, you know, I was in charge of two teams and 12 people, um, and 70, 80% of our time was going to debugging one-offs, you know, a user writes it. And as a platform, Anytime you have to pay attention to a user, you done fucked up, right? You've made poor life choices in some way or another. <laughs> um, so like 70, 80% of our time is going to, you know, individual users going, Parse is down. Parse is not down. Look at my, all my graphs, look, they're all up. You know, I have a wall full of graphs and they're all green. You know, and I'm just losing credibility the longer I argue with them, but so fine. Okay, you know, I'll go or I'll dispatch an engineer, someone will go, I try and track down what shitty JavaScript you uploaded. Sorry, it wasn't always their fault. Um, <laughs> could be anything, right? Um, and, and it would take, you know, we had an elaborate ganglia, ganglia deployment and a graphite, and we had, you know, tools, and fire tools, and our tools. We'd be bouncing around from, you know, log and the dashboard. It could take hours, it could take days. There were some times that I would just cut it off, and I'd be like, these people are not. We have to say they're not important enough to us because you're too important. We're not making any progress. Um, it was deeply demoralizing. It was pretty, pretty awful. And I tried everything. Um, and the thing that finally got us dug out of this hole was getting some of our data sets, um, especially the edge and, and the databases, getting those data sets into Scuba, which is Facebook's internal tool that just slices and dices, you know, high cardinality fields um, in real time in memory. Like it's but ugly, it's pretty hostile to users, <laughs> but it gets the job done. And we went from hours or days um, to like reliably seconds or minutes to track down anything that they could possibly do to us. I mean, our, our bugs too, we occasionally have those. Um, and that, that allowed us to get, you know, get a hold of our reliability, start shipping code again, and, um, because like people would be like, parse this down. And it would end up being something like, you know, so maybe maybe it would be like the login endpoint was timing out every time that one user connected to it because they had deployed a query that was doing a 5x full table scan or the date or the size of the collection had just tipped over the thing where it started. Like maybe they hadn't done anything, but like it went from a thousand objects to a thousand and one, and that was just so that you know, it could be anything. Um, so we got a handle on it. And, and then I moved on, and I didn't really even think about it, you know, because this is what we do, and I'm on to the next fire, you know? I didn't even stop to think about it. But when I left Facebook, I was like, well, surely the world must have come a long way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, shut up. <laughs> well, it hadn't. Uh, although, uh, notably, every single fucking vendor's marketing site told me that it had. <laughs> For about six months, we were like, are we starting a company? No, somebody's doing this. Oh, oh no, they haven't. Um, anyway, so that's what we saw that to do. I, was, I, I literally did not know how to engineer anymore without this kind of a tool. Um, so back to the story. Uh, we're going to refer to this as the LAMP stack and microservices, even though that isn't entirely fair or true. Um, let's look at some example problems. <clears throat> Photos are loading slowly for some people. Why? Literally every one of us has, has debugged some versions of these, right? You look at it, you look at the page, and you can pretty much already identify it's that. It's something there, right? Cool. You can monitor all these things. This is great. Dashboards are valuable. You have a few data sources. No one knows predominate. You know, there is no world in which your team should be going, you know, all the time. <laughs> it should be, oh, that again, you know? Or not getting paged at all. How about that one? Um, and 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 most most interestingly, the last one, the health of the system basically accurately represents the experience of your users because they all kind of are sharing the same components. So like you know if if you're if you're if you have like two and a half nine, so you have ninety nine point five percent reliability, one half of one percent of the time, somebody's getting an error. 
probably not going to be noticeable to most people. Um, yeah, we'll come back to that. Monitoring. Best practices. You know all this. So now let's look at some of these taken from Instagram and Parse. What the fuck should I monitor? <laughs> I have more. I can do this all night. <laughs> Pardon me while I just drink. Um, I, I have more. <laughs> this one was one of my favorites. Uh, um, I, uh, our support team comes to me and is like, it pushes down. It's pushed down. I'm like, no, push is not down. Look, I'm going to push it right now. And they go away. They come back the next day. And they're like, oh, I'm pretty sure it's down. I'm like, definitely not down. What, are you on crack? They come back again. They're like, but the people in Eastern Europe seem to think it's down. And I'm like, what the fuck? I still don't believe you. <laughs> you know, a week goes on and the fucking Eastern Europe still complaining about push being down. I'm like, okay, I guess I believe you. Um, turns out, so we were doing round robin DNS for our push record, and we had added a few hosts, which caused it to exceed the size of the UDP packet. Supposed to fail over to TCP, did everywhere except for one router in Eastern Europe. <laughs> Again, not really sure what I'm supposed to monitor there. I'm sure there's a lesson somewhere. Um, anyway, these are all very unknown unknowns uh, that may never have happened before. It's kind of like this long, thin tail of things that have almost never happened and almost never will except once. <laughs> Super well once. And um, other characteristics. Many components. Many storage systems. Remember when like best practices were you have the database, like the capital T, capital D, the database? <laughs> good, good times those were. Um, now, like, uh, th there are legit reasons why we now have like polyglot persistence. Like, there, there's just been innovations in data that cause competitive advantage if you use different crappy ass databases. Uh, um, you cannot increasingly model the entire system in your own head. Uh, dashboards can be actively misleading. You know how, like, every team you've ever been on, the debugger of last resort is the person who's been there the longest. That is because we don't do science when debugging. <laughs> that is because we have shitty dashboards that tell, give you an answer, a possible answer, and you use all this intuition and scar tissue and history to try and fill in all of the missing pieces and blanks. And the person who's been there the longest has a big advantage because they've seen more outages than you. Um, one of the rare cheerful moments in my operations career was realizing that I have now three times seen teams where that was not true. Um, at, and that was at Facebook and at Parse and at Honeycomb. Um, it takes you know an engineer three to six months to get up to speed, learn the systems, learn the tools, be fluent. And then the best debugger is the person who's the best debugger or who wrote the system and who's most intimately familiar with it and can kind of hold that component in their head really well. And I find that so heartening that there can be a better way. The hardest problem is often just identifying which component is at fault. You know, everything's sort of interrelated. Everything's the hardest problem is to systems. Everything's getting a little bit slower. Why? And, and, and lastly, I'll contrast uh, the health of the system. Because the health of the system is almost irrelevant. It doesn't actually matter. Um, if you're on AWS, and an availability zone goes down, should you care? Should your users notice? The health of each individual event, each individual request, um, and every high cardinality grouping of those requests is what actually matters. Um, and, and also errors are usually not evenly distributed, right? Um, you might have 99.5% um, reliability and yet have 99.99% for most people, and everybody whose last name starts with SHI is 100% down. That's, that is qualitatively worse. And those little edges are hiding everywhere. Averages cover over a multitude of sins, and so do aggregates. 
best practices for dealing with them. Uh, complex systems, instrumentation. I am a big, I know I just showed up at a Prometheus group and I'm like, metrics suck. You should use events. And like, I'm, I'm not actually trying to say that. Metrics are very good for some things. I am, however, leaning a little bit far in the opposite direction because I feel like the industry has a long way to go. And the industry already knows that metrics are great. We all know metrics are great. They're performant, they're fast, it counters, blah, blah, blah. Cool, you know that. You probably don't have deep um, um, experience with event-based debugging systems, and that's why I'm being a little bit annoying. I apologize. Uh, oh, uh, I missed the good part. Um, best practices, right. Um, dashboards are good mostly for KPIs, I think, in very complex systems. Your KPIs, um, and as a starting point, you have to test in production. That's a different talk. Um, and your reward in exchange for embracing all of this chaos and all of these changes is that you can have dramatically fewer paging alerts, right? Like four. <laughs> uh, request rate, um, error rate, latency, possibly saturation, and then a couple that stress your end-to-end -end checks somewhere around the critical path that makes you money, right? Um, and if you trust your debugging tools to get, answer any question that you can throw at it, in seconds, you can have that. Instead of paging yourselves about this random cluster of symptoms that indicates a Redis slowdown, we're gonna page about that. Um, so I can, I know, I know we're running kind of late. Um, I can basically stop there. I will show you the part that I just added for you guys about sampling, how about that? Oh, and the reason that uh, events, I believe, are better than metrics are because it, it tells a story, because uh, it gives more context. It tells you that all these things are true at once, right? Like, honeycomb events can, are arbitrarily, arbitrarily wide, up to the number of Linux file handles can be open at once. Um, but, like, we'll have, like, hundreds of, of dimensions in our, in our you know, events. And, and what that's telling you is, you know, well, you've got the raw query, and you've got the normalized query, and you've got the unique request ID, and you've got the user ID, and you've got the groups, and you, you have all this information um, together, so you don't have to like hop all around from fucking tool to tool, and like all that shit about cardinality, all the hacks around not have, not having these cardinality problems will only get you so far because you care about cardinality. All of the data that you care about ever is high cardinality. It is the most important thing. Ah, I feel strongly about this. <laughs> anyway, I guarantee to you. If you're running a complex enough system, you can't live without high cardinality as a first class citizen. Um, sorry, I'm still ranting about that, aren't I? Structured data, super important. Yep, yep, yep. Is my computer freezing again? I didn't mean to yell at you, I'm sorry. All right, I'm gonna reboot this and talk about sampling. Um, so sampling. The thing is, um, whenever whenever we talk about sampling, you know, people who haven't run giant systems at scale are like, lose data? Oh, gasp. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody loses data. Every, by, everybody um, compacts data. There we go. Um, metrics um, systems do this by aggregating, right? You're just losing data this way. Um, I'm just saying lose your data this way so that you have the raw events. Because I actually believe it, you know, I'm not going to get super religious about this, but um, observability, I think, requires you, in most cases, to be able to get back to the source of truth, which is the individual raw original event. And if you can't, if you can't get back to that, um, you can only run pre-aggregated, pre-digested questions. You can only ask the questions you've anticipated in advance. You can't, you know, this is why we do read time aggregation instead of write time aggregation, because this is extremely important to us. You'd be able to ask any new question that you think of about those, you know, original raw rows. Are we back? Kind of, almost, still starting. Um, so yeah, so your choices are, um, you know, but not sample like evenly, right? Because then the obvious, answer is, well, what about things that happen rarely? Great point. I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> um, and those, you should not, you know, you should sample at a much lower rate. So, for example, your web, your edge, your web logs or whatever, um, there, you should not sample five OXs and two OXs the same, right? Uh, at Parse, I think we sampled like 20 to 1 for 200s and kept all of our 500s. 
let the server cut the top off the mountain when, it, when we went down. Um, you know, we would heavily sample our, our selects and keep 100% of our deletes. Um, Facebook had, like, the other reason for this is, is because of the amplification factor. You know, it's not like your observability stack is going to have one uh, right for every one request. No, you want to incentivize people to generate lots of them. You know, uh, an event for every service it hits, an event for every data storage it hits. You know, so, so like at, at Facebook, they generate like 500 events for every request that came in the front door or something like that. You're not going to build and pay for an observability stack that's 500 the time, times the size of production, <laughs> I assume. Um, and it's it would be pointless if you did. Um, the example that my, my friend Ben likes to use is, is um, uh, temperature. When I say the temperature in San Francisco is 78 degrees, it doesn't mean that everywhere. <laughs> it means that a representative sample is 78 degrees. Um, when times are good, when things are behaving normally, all you care about is the shape and the direction right, of what's happening. But as soon as times are bad, you care about every every single detail, right? And so you want to have a representative sample that you can go inspect the shit out of. Um, there's just like one more slide I want to show. Please, please load. Anyway, sampling, la la la, it's pretty cool. Um, it's 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 great for keeping a, a handle on costs. I'm just going to show you the non-sampling slide that I was thinking of that I want to show you which is this. Here are some examples of the many, many, many arbitrary questions that you can ask and answer with event-driven systems, like within seconds. This is what I got used to and realized I no longer knew how to engineer without. You know, this ability to, I spend all my time in database land, the only reason DBAs exist is because the data tools are so shitty, and you need that same, like, immense amount of intuition and knowledge just to interpret the few stupid metrics that you get um, but when all of a sudden you can just sum up the locks that are being held and break down by user ID and go, oh, that dude is taking up 92.7% of our global write lock, suddenly being a DBA gets very, very easy. <sighs> GitHub has this problem all the time where they like they have people launch bots, right? And their state-of-the-art method for detecting when a new bot is hit is watching the CPU, <laughs> the CPU load time like go up on the MySQL primary. Pains me, physically pains me. And the way that they figure out who's running the bot is they go to Vivid Cortex, which is a great tool, but you know, kind of traditional. Um, and and they they hit refresh a bunch of times to see if the user ID pops up in the sample query that it shows you. And if they see the same user ID a few times, they'll go and check it. <laughs> this fucking hurts me so bad. Instead of being able to just group by. Right? It's so easy when you can just ask the question that you want to ask instead of having to like correlate between this dashboard and this log and oh shit, NTP was off, so my time stamp isn't right. It's stupid. Yeah. Um, all the nines in the world really don't matter if users are having a shit experience. So that's basically it. Um, oh, except for I will plug. Um, operation skills are not optional. 26. Did I say 2016? It's 2018, isn't it? <laughs> it's definitely not optional now. Um, yeah. The other thing, I hope that in a couple years we look on dark old days now um, when we used to just write code and deploy it and wait to get paged. That is so stupid. Like the best software engineers I ever worked with at Facebook were the ones who would spend half their day in their IDE writing code and the other half of the day in scuba, understanding what the fuck they had deployed, or their intern had deployed. <laughs> but like, you, you have to have that muscle memory, you know, when dealing with a sufficiently complex system, because you can't predict all the interactions. And you really want engineers who have the habit of shipping something and going and looking at it and see, did what I expected to happen actually happen? Did anything else, is anything else just stabbing me in the eye without the glaring obviousness around my change set? Um, because that, is the best way I have yet seen uh, to, to find these really complex problems. So, uh, Gregory at the end of his talk said, build better tools. We have to start building, thinking about the future. Like, I feel like microservices was us as an industry doubling down on complexity, just going, all right, <laughs> all right, <laughs> we can no longer do this, so <clears throat> we're going to go all the way. 
Um, and everybody who has adopted microservices as, is suddenly realizing that their tools have not taken the jump with them. Uh, the other game in town is distributed tracing, which is excellent, except what do you trace? It's an interesting problem. Um, the combination of honeycomb plus dis distributed tracing, they're both event-oriented, they're very similar. Um, we excel at the what should I trace, and they excel at the tracing, and we would be pretty stupid if we didn't plug in the open tracing API maybe this quarter or last quarter, but so hypothetically that might be coming up, which is pretty cool because then you then you would hypothetically be able to like you know fi find where the problem is and trace it, and then from the trace go okay now what else is experiencing this problem and, and flip back and forth and be super rad so cool thanks. <laughs>